out with the uh, pretty boy Tony. Yeah. Hey. Right. Okay. Hey, Tony. Yeah. Hey. Enhance 224 to 176. Hi, everyone. Tony from Act the Movies here with my co host <laughs> from Castilla vs. the Pod Monster. You know those videos that come out on Fridays that most of you don't watch? Uh, it's also a podcast you could download. Please download that podcast. Can I now say that I'm on talking about tapes when you introduce me on Castella? No. Oh. Um, yeah, so... That's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a Godzilla podcast, and we talk about giant monsters a lot. We tend to steer clear of King Kong, though, except for the Toho version. Yeah. Because he's kind of before the Toho monsters, so I thought this would be a good opportunity for us to talk about some King Kong stuff. And what do you know it, when I looked up the poster for King Kong 76, since the movie came <sighs> out in December, the poster said King Kong for Christmas. Why is there always a bug in here when I'm recording? Last time you were here, a gnat. a gnat was here, and now yep. it's grown up into a fly, I guess. <laughs> it's huge. I know, I know, all, all day long we've had flies here. I think it's getting fumigated <laughs> over the weekend, maybe? I had to, I had to buy the little, the bands, the, the... Raid strips? Yes, yes, anyway. Oh <laughs> Let's talk about <laughs> King Kong. Uh, this is the 1976 remake. Yay! I, uh, <laughs> I kind of love this movie. <laughs> Produced by Dino De Laurentiis, uh, who, is a, who is the rare Italian producer who actually produced some decent movies. Like uh, the Hannibal Lecter movie. He produced a yeah. lot of stuff. I also saw, uh, was it Michael Eisner apparently was part of this? Like, it was his idea that oh, he wanted really? to do a reboot, which... I like Michael Eisner to a point, but then he ruined the People Mover in Disneyland, and like no one's ever gonna forget. No. Okay, one. well this was 1976. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was directed by John Gillerman and uh, written by Lorenzo Simple Jr. We'll get to him in a second. <laughs> and the effects were a uh, collaborative effort between Rick Baker and Carlo Rambaldi. Now, Rick Baker, uh, he helped make the suit with the face. Uh, the Kong is a suit in this movie. They wanted <laughs> Kong to be a full-size practical effect, and I think Newt was telling us they told investors that it was going to be this big thing, and they got oh, a lot wow. of money for it. They built the full-size practical effect, and, uh, <laughs> well, it didn't work out the way they wanted it. We'll, fig we'll get to that as we go throughout the movie. But uh, Lorenzo Simple Jr., uh, he has a thing here. I have a quote from him. We made a very deliberate attempt not to be anything like the original movie in tone or mood. Uh, Dino, yeah, Dino wanted it to be light and amusing rather than pretentious. Uh, yeah, portentious. Um, I don't think the original was meant to be mythic. The original King Kong is extremely crude. I don't mean it's not wonderful. It was remarkable for its time, but it was a very small backlot picture. We thought times had changed so much that audiences were more sophisticated. Dino felt we could have more fun with it. We hope to do sensational things with advanced special effects on a big screen. When I think of sophisticated, I think of King Kong 1976. The, yeah, the original. <laughs> no, no, I, I think of oh, this one. Why? <laughs> I guess we should point out I love uh, the original King Kong. Really you also good. really like the Peter Jackson one. I really did like the Peter Jackson one. I remember uh, you were obsessed Because it, it was big at the time. Well, I mean, it's still good. Yeah. Uh, like, you, you, you think I'm bad with porgs? You had a problem. <laughs> um, the original King Kong is great. And uh, since this was a movie made before 2016, uh, we're sorry. I'm sure it was problematic. We apologize that something about the natives is offensive. And I have something to point out that's pretty offensive when we get to that okay. point. <laughs> okay. Yes, the, the Asian character in the original is problematic. Cancel cancel Marion C. Cooper. Cancel RKO Pictures. They're all dead. <laughs> we cancel them anyway. Great movie. Anyway, let's talk about this. King Kong 76. I grew up watching this movie. <laughs> Cause I saw the really? yeah I saw the original black and white one and I loved King Kong and I'm like oh there's a remake oh. in color and how'd I, that make you feel watching that as a kid oh as a kid I loved it oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I loved it there was one aspect that let me down which we'll get to but uh instead of a boat full of a crew that's going to shoot a movie it is a boat looking for oil yeah 
instead of the director, the dad from Beethoven. That's who he was, by the way. <laughs> I, I realized. I was, yeah. like, I was like, wait, who is that? And then I IMDb'd and yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> the, the dad from Beethoven, he is uh, the the whatever that character is in King Kong, the Jack Black character. Uh, the director character is now an oil guy and all the oil stuff was put in because in the 70s there was the energy crisis, there was an oil crisis. Oh yeah. Yeah, so he's like the head of it. He knows about this island and there's something weird here. I always think Richard Keel from EGA is in this. I love EGA. EGA's good. Uh, also note, I'm, I'm sorry, Jaws from James Bond. That's probably the more memorable <laughs> character, but um. I always think he's in this, but it's actually uh, Jack O'Halloran, who was non in Superman 2, yeah. the mute Kryptonian. Do you know a lot about that guy? Not really. His, I know he's in the That movie. guy is a fascinating person. His family was like heavily in the mob. And I, oh. think, I think characters in The Godfather are based off his dad. So he was like involved in the mob and then just was like, I'm gonna be an actor now. <laughs> Sure. He was also a boxer. He's like a real Work interesting dude. Uh, yeah, so the oh the company is called Petrox. And apparently that was a reference to Pet Rocks because that was like the fad that was going around at that time. So people oh. used to paint rocks and they were pet rocks. And people in the 70s were stupid. Uh, <laughs> that'd, be like, that'd be like obsessing over like a stupid penguin thing from a Star Wars movie. It's really dumb. What do you got on your shirt there? Word. Oh my God, it's all sequel trilogy it's stuff. BB-8, Admiral Akbar, oh. Ahsoka, Chewbacca, Pork, oh. uh, Stormtrooper. Oh my God. C-3PO, Lothcat. Oh. It's a great shirt. Oh. Okay. Uh. It's a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this uh, oil company's getting ready to go somewhere and Jeff Bridges sneaks in. And uh, my girlfriend, the entire movie, just couldn't stop talking about how dreamy Jeff Dude, Bridges was. he's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> until and then took, Jessica. Yeah, until Woo. he took his shirt off, and then she's like, he's too thin. And I'm like... Yeah, oh, I'm sure that's right. exactly what she said. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we find out that the uh, the oil guy... Now, this was like a thing... In the original script, uh, the oil dude, I can't remember his name, oil guy, Beethoven dad. Uh, in the original script, he found the map to King Kong from like the Vatican. Like the Vatican had secret files. And someone sure. someone involved in the movie was very offended by that. So they changed it to the US government. The oil guy paid off the US government to look the other way. And so he could like find this island. Uh, so they're talking about an island that's constantly covered in fog and uh, they're taking like radar stuff and they're like, there's so much heat from this. It's got to be it's got to be from oil. And then uh, Jeff Bridges is like, no, nope, you're wrong. I'm Jeff Bridges. And they're like, who are you? And he's like, I'm Jeff Bridges. And they're like, no, who are you in this movie? And they're like, oh, I'm a primatologist. Jack was his name. Yeah, he was yeah. like Jack, a uh, primatologist who is also a paleontologist and he's heard stories of this. Yeah, he he beast. went to school for like something else or was studying something else, but mm. then he like switched over. My favorite's yeah. when they're like checking his like IDs and stuff. They're like, "We don't believe this is a real guy," but it's literally who he is. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> "You're from Exxon. You're from this. You're from Shell. I know it. We're naming all the real they're oil like, companies." Oh, you're actually the dude. <laughs> all right. Anyway, I'm gonna take yo, the sandwich away. Yeah. Once they figure out who he is, they're like, "Oh, cool. You want to come to us on the island?" <laughs> I know, let's go. <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, I'll go check out the island. Uh, sure." Mm -hmm. um, so he's kind of an environmentalist, sort of. If this was in the 90s, it would have been way worse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they go to uh, the Island of the Skull. They never call it Skull Island, which I thought was interesting. So this movie goes on for 15 minutes and then suddenly remembers that women should probably be in it. Just one. Yeah, just one. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I mean, they show other women, but like. Wow. Did you not think they were valid? So Jessica Lang shows up and uh, one interesting thing about her in this movie is she is hot as fuck. She she's still a babe. I guess, If yeah. she asked me, I'd be like, please. <laughs> so this is her breakout role. This is like yeah, the first. Uh, introducing. Yeah, and this blew her career up, which led to another young girl 10 years later picking to be in the sequel. And it didn't, her career was still fine, but the movie did not help. Pic unrelated picture of Linda Hamilton. Aww. Anyway. <laughs> um, uh, so they find her in a raft. And uh, one interesting thing about Jessica Lange, this, this story broke in 2008 and it comes up all the time. A lot of people audition for this. Uh, Kim Basinger, I forget who else, but uh, Meryl Streep has the story. Did you see that story? Meryl. <laughs> Poor Meryl. 
Carl. Now, keep in mind, uh, there's no way to back up the story. And um, women sometimes do this thing called uh, lying. So Meryl Streep, who I think is a phony baloney, might be lying. You're a phony baloney. Uh, it's a Seinfeld reference. Queen Meryl. <laughs> so Meryl Streep apparently went to audition. And she's there with uh, Le- uh, Dino De Laurentiis and his son. And apparently the son in Italian was like, she's too ugly for King Kong or something. And she didn't, they didn't know that she can understand Italian. So she like fired back at them or something. And then uh, she cried about it. And clearly she got over it because in 2008, she was still bringing it up because women never forget. Anyway, <laughs> Meryl Streep probably would have been fine in this movie, but you want Jessica Lange. Yeah. It's kind of like you're fine in this review, but the fans want Trisha or Crystal. But, you know, turns out Jessica Lange is the only survivor from a sunken vessel. A yacht. A yacht, yes. And uh, like exploded or something. Yeah, she said she was discovered by some filmmaker, which I think is a reference to the original. Yeah. But then it gets a little dark. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. And she says her name is Dwan. She changed the A and W to be more interesting. So we're going to call her Jessica Lang for the rest of the movie because I'm not going to say Dwan every five minutes. Uh, so the funny thing about the the filmmaker who discovered her, apparently him and his friends were in the bottom of the ship watching Deep Throat. And pro- she calls him Harry or something. And apparently it's like this deep inside joke where maybe the director who discovered her was trying to get her into porn and was taking her to Singapore to be in all these porn movies. But then they all blew up except for her. <laughs> So I thought that was interesting. And then uh, the crew is super horny for her. And I understand. Everyone is. And they give her a bunch of clothes, which are all men's clothes. But she magically turns them into women's form-fitting clothes. It's like booty shorts. She has like the crop top. Yeah, she's like, like, oh, I cut this man's jeans. And now they're perfectly form-fitting. she's form like fitting. flirting hardcore with everybody too. And everybody's just kind of like, oh, Jessica. Yeah. Which, uh, look, look, to be honest, I would be the same way. Again, Jessica Lang is I would super be the hot same, in this movie. I, Again, today, it's like, oh, Jessica. Uh, so yeah, they finally get to the island. And the matte shot of the wall looks great. What do you think? Does the wall look great? <laughs> Yeah, amazing. You agree the wall looks good? Yeah. You're a fan of the wall? Oh, 100%. You know what? (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) Anyway, anyway. This is why people hate you. (laughs) Uh, So then it gets to the part in the classic King Kong story where they meet the natives. Well, they don't uh, meet them yet. They sneak in and then they're just watching them and taking pictures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. Like, they're they're sneaking, they're observing. And uh, the natives actually, they look more realistic than these movies tend to portray natives. Uh, not the ones that are dressed up. I can't speak for those, but just the natives that are hanging around. I'm like, oh, I've seen documentaries where people look like that. Uh, and then the head priest shows up and he's a guy in an ape outfit and he's got like a thong and he is a fucking sexy dancer. He is built. He is the I most. I love ar- the giant patch of like, I like guess, straw hair just <laughs> on his crotch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, this is yeah. what I wanted to bring up. Yeah. So I noticed with the one woman that they're about to sacrifice. Yeah. They give her a wig, basically. Okay. It's a blonde wig. I didn't pick up on that. That's funny. How? Yeah. So is Kong racist? I don't know. Because he, you he, know. He, or oh, that rate, maybe he just likes that color hair. I don't know. No, 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 no. So it's a person of color. Yeah. Who is a woman. Yeah. With a blonde wig. Yeah. Clearly, like, these women that are being sacrificed are dead. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but then I think the it's white a... blonde woman comes along. <laughs> That's in every version of the story. I do like how every version of the story, the natives are like, well, we don't want to kill our own women. Let's grab this broad. <laughs> <laughs> like, somehow now Kong's okay with this woman. He's like, yeah. oh, I like this woman. And then yeah. he does the thing um, he does. So, so the... No. Yeah. Is he a racist? Maybe. Like, <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so they spot the Americans watching them. Yep. And I like uh, the, the the priest realizes they have like a white chick and they're like, oh, and then he gets like, me. <laughs> he gets like six of the native girls. Like, hey, we'll switch, switch. And she's like, no, I'm okay. And then they go to attack him and they shoot and they run yeah. away. So they saw there was oil the at the place. And um, yeah, so basically Jeff Bridges. So before they fired their guns and ran away, they noticed the oil mm-hmm. uh, that's like cooking in the earth. And uh, Jeff Bridges, he wants to study the ape, but they won't help him. So he's about to go on in, on his own. And he uh, flirts with Jessica Lang for a little bit. And I guess he's kind of like, well, before I leave, let's 
bone or something. Yeah, he said something like, uh... You'll disappoint me if you're here when I get back. What do you mean you'll be disappointed? Well, I was hoping you'd be waiting for me in your cabin. Yeah. Meanwhile, the natives are coming in uh, By the way, it's so funny. So, like, I think every other version, like, the natives, like, sneak on board or something. So, Jeff Bridges leaves and... Jessica. They literally just drive yeah, by they and they're just, like, whoop! They just roll up and grab her and like, I'm like, wow, how can they must have been like, holy shit, she's right there. <laughs> Get her in, let's go. Uh, Jeff Bridges realizes she's taken, so they go to find her and uh, she is now in the ceremony and she's being- No blonde wig. No blonde wig, she doesn't need it. Uh, she is being hypnotized by the erotic dancing the of gyrating. the priest. Yeah, the gyrating <laughs> hips. <laughs> Which, by the way, this is a very, very sexual King Kong. This entire movie, I just this, have to like, oh my this god. This movie has a fucking boner. This movie has a boner. Um, so, being a kid, you know, you watch the original, there's like that implied romance with Kong and the girl and whatnot. This one, they're just hitting you over the head with like sexual stuff nonstop. Hitting you over the head? They were dropping boulders on you. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so I don't think, by the way, they never show them drugging her or anything. So I really think his sexy dancing is what's hypnotizing Fuck, that her. gyrating and that thing over his crotch, whatever you want yeah. to call it. I was just kind of like, that's a little distracting. Uh, so they, you know, they tie her up to the post and then Kong shows up and he looks pretty good. Uh, it's a, uh, what Actually, I like the eyes. Were there like, yeah, were I, think they they're real or, okay. I think they're real Okay. I think they're real They were like really like the. The actual like, like iris, yeah, so it was really big. So uh, like, maybe they might contact, have been they, they might have been fake. I don't know. I have, I have to look it up. Oh, again. whatever. They look great. Uh, Rick Baker did a ton of like makeup and practical effects, and this was like his first big one. Although he says that like his Kong <laughs> isn't great in this. It's just like it was lit very well. Uh, but I think it works really well at night. Like it blends together. Yeah. It blends with the big hand that grabs her. The blue screen is not that terrible. Uh, There's one scene where I was like, Ugh. Yeah, but, but it, it's, overall, it's I'm okay with it. Uh, but it's a really good reveal, and he does a roar. And the funny thing about the roar is uh, it's from a, a Lost World movie from like the 60s or 50s, I think. Uh, but that roar has been used in so many monster movies, and I used it in uh, the Tomb Raider AVGN episode. So he grabs Jessica oh. Lang, goes into the woods, and then the, the crew shows up to try to rescue her. And there's a really great line of dialogue. He's taken her. Someone's taken her. Who the hell do you think went through there? Some guy in an ape suit? Huh. Because when they shot this, they thought there were gonna be a lot more shots with the, the giant full-size Kong practical effect and that did not happen. So I get, I think that's supposed to be like shitting on Godzilla movies and stuff, but then the irony is they ended up mostly doing a man in a suit. <laughs> then we see Kong during the day and the composite shots don't look as well during the day, but they still look pretty fine. Trust me, we did uh, on our podcast, we did King Kong versus Godzilla and King Kong escapes and if, if this movie looks fine. When you're comparing it to the Toho Kong, this looks great. <laughs> Even at its worst, it looks great. Yeah. Um, Kong is ready to eat Jessica Lang. <laughs> and she wins him over by slapping him around. And She's like yelling and beating him up while beating his hand yeah. up. Turns out that's his kink. How, how fucking lucky do you have to be? Yeah. I love being beat up by tiny white women. Yeah, I love being yelled at and belittled. And she calls him like a chauvinist. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> you male chauvinist. By the way, I was also dying that she keeps bringing up astrology stuff. Yeah. Like, even at one point, she's like, are you an Aries? And I'm like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> I will say, so uh, Kong is kind of like into it and whatnot. And then she starts mentioning astrology and he puts her down. He looks disappointed, much like I am when chicks bring up astrology. Did I ever tell you about that one chick? I Let right. people have fun. Okay, no, 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 but here's the thing. So uh, I was on dating sites for a while. Big mistake, don't do it. 
I know I met my current girlfriend from one, but that was like, that was an exception. Uh, you don't so, deserve her though. So when you're dating, you have to pretend to like stuff that chicks like, and one of them is astrology. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, so I pretended to be interested in astrology with this chick who was too into astrology. I thought she was going to be like, what are you, a Virgo? And I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm a Virgo. Instead, I for an hour, just texting back and forth, what house is your sign in? Give me this, I need to look at the chart. And I'm like, oh my God, this is the worst conversation I've ever had. So astrology uh, sucks, and I'm glad me and King Kong agree on that. The oil guy apparently called in ahead of time being like, we found the big one, so they needed the oil. Yeah, they're more concerned with that, and Kong is concerned getting that mud off of Jessica Lang. <laughs> I want to talk about that scene. Yeah. So they go... And they put her under the waterfall. Yeah. And then the blowing scene. Why was it so like sensual? <laughs> she looked like she was like actually getting off on it. So what? Johanna didn't describe that right. King Kong does not blow her. He blow dries her. He blows on her. And actually the effect is pretty good. They actually made yeah, his, his cheeks, cheeks get pump. really big. So he's blowing onto her. And at first she's like, ah, ah, and it's like, oh, that's cute. But then it, it goes on for too long. Like you said, it's like, okay, we get it. But then she starts, yeah, you're right. She's like, ah, ah, she's and, I'm like, like, ah. and I'm like, can you not? <laughs> she is, I could see why that guy might've wanted to put her in a porn. By the way, when they first got to the island, the first thing they did, she just crawls around on the water. Jeff Bridges takes pictures, her tits almost fall out. And I watched frame for a frame to make sure they did. Uh, they didn't, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. She is a very sexual character. I probably the entire movie, she's just kind of like, ah, and I'm like, I probably shouldn't have been watching this as a kid, but whatever. Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, you watch the original, you're like, I want to see the giant ape fight the monsters. And then it's just King Kong blowing on a chick <laughs> having an orgasm. <laughs> King Kong looks so creepy. His pervy sex face looks so creepy. It's just and like then, a yeah, he's like smiling. He's like, he. And by coincidence today, I sent you the picture earlier. I was in Walmart and I see, you know, they have the movie uh, toys. They have one that says King Kong, but it didn't look like any kind of King Kong I saw. And I opened it up and the face on the figure is the pervy 76 face. I'm like, what? I'm like, they make a figure? For I think it's really funny that they have the King Kong stuff at Walmart and then they have the Godzilla stuff in Target. Yeah, they do. I noticed that. It was weird. Uh, oil guy gets excited because they found all this oil. But then his scientist, who I'm pretty sure is an actor from Star Trek, but I can't remember who, what character he played. He tells him like, yeah, the oil will be great in 10,000 years. Like it's not ready to be used for stuff. And he's like, oh no. And then somehow his backup plan is like, oh, I know. I'll come back with a giant gorilla. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? I think even one of the characters was like, what are you talking about? He's like, what about that Exxon tiger? Put a tiger in your tank? And that was a paper tiger. And it's like, yeah, well, that's a man. What are you going to do with the giant girl? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so, yeah, he has this whole plan to get uh, Kong, which I thought was really <laughs> stupid. Then we get the famous uh, tree bridge scene, which is in most King Kong movies. And I think this one looks pretty decent. Uh, Kong shows up. Uh, he starts, you know, rocking the thing. And at this point, no one knew about the uh, the missing spider pit scene in the original. So they don't even attempt to do a spider pit scene. Whereas Peter Jackson was like, I'm going to do a spider pit scene, crikey. It's by Peter Jackson. Yeah, I, <laughs> I heard it before. Uh, my favorite thing about this tree scene is every time someone falls off, they do that slow motion blue screen of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then Kong goes away and he's by these two big rocks, which come into play later. And um, these giant like monster movies and rocks. Because it looks like a mountain, I guess. And it's easier There's to dress. always dr rocks. It's easier to dress that set. I don't Just, know. Uh. Um, so yeah, he's by the rocks and he's still giving Lang the perviest look in the world. And he's trying to rip her clothes off with his finger. And he gets pretty close. He gets pretty close. He's very rapey. And the movie calls him out on it later. You <laughs> um, and then at an hour and 22 minutes, the movie realizes something it forgot. What, when you think of King Kong, the original, what are some things you remember from it? Dinosaurs. Yeah, there's a lot of dinosaurs in the original. There's not one dinosaur in this. 
Uh, there is a giant fake rubber snake that looks like it's out from a Toho movie. I like to think that the snake was a hero. <laughs> He's just like saving. He's actually saving Jessica Lange. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't consent. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's he the was the true hero of this movie. The snake against rape. <laughs> the anti-rape snake. <laughs> Just goes around the island lecturing people. <laughs> yeah, so I have this written here from uh, Wikipedia, so it must be true. In a notable departure from the original film, Semple, the writer, dropped the dinosaurs that are present with Kong on the island. The reason for the drop subplot was due to the increased attention on Kong and Dwan's love story. And financial reasons, as De Laurentiis didn't want to use stop-motion animation in the film. Nevertheless, a giant bow constrictor was incorporated into the film. I guess they figure, they're like, we need one. You got to give us one extra monster. But now it's kind of weird, because it's like, okay, so this island, they built the giant wall just to keep Kong and maybe this snake out? And that's it? Because the original Kong and even the, the remake, it's like, oh, they built this wall because it's fucking monsters on the other side. Uh, so he gets into a fight with the snake and he does the classic Kong jaw rip, which is in every Kong. Jessica Lang and Jeff Bridges, they escape uh, and they make their way back to where the trap is being made. They're like, they dug a big hole outside the, uh, the wall. And uh, somehow they, they captured King Kong. They put a bunch of knockout gas and Kong falls into it and just passes out right away. That actually is a cool shot where his arm comes out of the fog and then yeah. goes back down. And then all the natives come out of the bushes and they're like, oh, holy shit, Kong's gone. <laughs> uh, which I thought was a happy moment, but then Jeff Bridges makes you feel guilty about it in a scene coming up. Yeah. They somehow found a giant ship. They get access to a giant ship, which has- They the find another giant thing later on conveniently too for them. Uh, yeah. Uh, and they find like, it has the biggest cargo hold I've ever seen in a ship. <laughs> it's gigantic. I want to talk about the bars of that too. <laughs> Yeah. Why are they so large? He could stick his hand up in there. I know. <laughs> like, was the whole point because they just want her, Jessica to fall down? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we saw he's very strong. He broke the wall that the natives built for him, which I guess proves walls don't work. I mean, as some people would argue differently. I'm not oh here to my argue goodness. that. Okay, so while he's being imprisoned, uh, the oil guy's like, guys, Dwan. I'm going to make you a star. We're going to go coast to coast with Kong sponsored by Petrox oil. And he's like, you two should get married. And it could be like a big part of the story. And Jeff Bridges is like, mm, it's like too early, too early. And she's like, what do you think? And he's like, eh, too early. Uh, but then Jeff Bridges is like, uh, yeah, yeah. Because the girl was like, oh, I don't know how I feel about this. And he's like, that ape tried to rape you. He's evil. And he's, he's like, ask the natives there. He like there. said it like multiple times too. It he's, wasn't even just like kind of like a, oh, he said it once. Yeah. He, he's like, no, no, no. He tried to rape you. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, uh, ask the natives. And Jeff Bridges is like, oh, the natives are going to be miserable. We took away their God. Yeah, they're going to be drunks in a year. Yeah, he's, like, he's oh. like, in a few weeks, they'll be burnout drunks. I'm like, or they'll be happy that they can use the rest of the island and without, not sacrifice their women. Yeah, not have to sacrifice their women and actually have like a generation of like children that like maybe things just just me. Maybe things are gonna get better for him, especially in this version where there's no other giant monsters except maybe a snake. Uh, it's, dead. it's dead now. And it's dead. Good two for one. Those natives are gonna be <laughs> really happy. Uh, so I thought that was pretty offensive. I'm like, I, I don't know about that, dude. <laughs> so Jeff Bridges gets his wish. <laughs> Jessica Lang co goes back to his cabin and then he gets Kong blocked. Get it? Kong blocked. It's like cock blocked, but by King Kong. So King Kong throws a fit. <laughs> King Kong throws a fit. And uh, by the way, so his, so Kong's cargo hold, apparently on the other side of the wall are like the crew quarters where they sleep because that guy gets knocked off the wall and then all the important equipment for the ship must be on the other side because it all starts breaking. I also want to point out that the whole scene with Jeff and Jessica, they're like about to get it on, but her mind was on Kong. It was. That's what all she, she was like, yeah, I'll, I'll be right back. And then she went to go look for him and it was like checking on him. Yeah. And then she goes into his cage to calm him down. 
Is she actually like trying to get freaky with this giant? I, everyone's like, trying to fuck each other. Like, what's going on? Why is everybody so horny? The, J- Jeff Bridges wants to fuck uh, Jessica Lang. Jessica Lang wants to fuck King Kong. The oil guy wants to fuck Mother H- Nature and get that oil. <laughs> uh, fucking, I, I don't know. Uh, Dino De Laurentiis probably wanted to fuck any girl who was working on the movie. <laughs> That priest wanted to fuck that entire island. He could not stop shaking his hips. Oh, my God. (laughs) Uh, So she finally, like, calms him down. She's like, why are you waking up all these people? You're being an asshole. (laughs) Yeah. Like, hey. Like, you're being too loud. As if Khan could understand her. (laughs) So the the day of the show, Jeff Bridges is like, I don't want to be in the show. And he's like, you signed a contract. He's like, sue me. Yeah. I don't care. And he's like, Jessica Lang, come with me. We'll be in love together. And she's like, and he gets mad at her for being a woman who wants to be self empl- be employed. Uh, he he frowns on that. He's he's not having any of that. He's like, woman with a job. Oh it's God. 1976, and I will not stand for that. That is what Jeff Bridges says. That's an exact quote. Because uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, he's such a dick. He's like, I know this is your dream job, but I'm about to be poor and sued. Do you want to go around the country and? talk about apes it's like oh not really <laughs> the show starts and they reveal kong to the public where he, did they get that giant crown that's, i mean they made how it did, how did they make that so fast there's no way well, we don't know the passage of time <laughs> yeah so first he's in a giant gas pump which is just cloth uh then they pull it up and he's in a giant cage wearing a crown now, the sizes of the cage and the crown change. Me too. Because we get to see the full-size Kong animatronic, which, here you go, guys. This is everything it can do. Dude, it was so bad. It was very distracting, too. And they cut back and forth. So the animatronic Kong has these big, broad shoulders. And then it will cut to the Kong in the suit and it's like clear yeah. and the cage is smaller and he's more animated. It's so, so bad. And then he breaks out right away. He sees Jessica yeah, Lang. What, what was it? He was like, oh, the bad guy was like, oh yeah, like this was made in New York or whatever it was. He yeah. Said, and he was like, well, they're the, not going to break. Yeah. But I mean, that that was also in the original where they're like, it's made out of chrome steel. It'll be fine. And then it breaks out. Yeah, he's just like. <laughs> <laughs> he just rips it apart. And I love, it's the worst cut ever. So Kong is ripping the cage and then it cuts to the animatronic Kong with the cage and it's just going. Argh. Uh, and then it gets pretty violent. He's just full on stepping on people. He uh, yeah. he kills Oil Guy. Apparently, he was going to live. They wanted that oh. character to live because the director in the original lived. Um, and he was there was going to be a setup for a sequel and everything. But apparently, test audiences were kind of mad that he didn't get killed. Oh. So they like worked that in where he gets stepped on. <laughs> The, the animatronic Kong is one of the worst things. It's really I've bad. Apparently, I think they did take it on tour to promote the movie, so they got some use out of it, because it looks like shit in this movie. It's so bad. They tried. They tried. Yeah, like, there's an attempt, but it, it, it was too stiff. Look, other movies did it better at Jurassic Park, probably learned from the mistakes of this movie. <laughs> Kong going through the city. It reminded me of the Universal Studios ride, the old one. Mm. I loved that ride. I never got to go on that, but I got to go on the Jaws one at least. The Jaws one wasn't as good. Jaws one was fun. I if love you, the Jaws one. The Jaws one. one is fun if you love Jaws, but it's not as good I as the King Jaws. Kong one. The King Kong ride was awesome. So you would like go through the city on like a no, train. No, no, I've seen YouTube videos and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. That. And it was like, now that was an animatronic Kong that looked fucking great. Uh, it was awesome. He would like explode out of a building and then he was on a bridge at the end. It was so cool. And uh, I think one of the reasons I like that ride is because I liked this movie growing up and like I like both of them for that reason. So it was cool seeing Kong just walk around the city. I am sad they took down the King Kong ride. Although the mummy roller coaster is pretty good. I have never had <laughs> so much fun on a ride in Universal. Than the mummy than roller coaster? Ro- oh my God. It's was- pretty good. I would have preferred King Kong, but I'm like, at least it was replaced it's- with something oh awesome. Oh my God. I hope they never get rid of that though. Kong uh, walks onto a, uh, he walks into some power lines. And uh, unlike his Toho counterpart, he does not get electrical power. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have you can listen to our King Kong vs. Godzilla episode at castzilla.com. Uh, Castzilla vs. the pod monster. Remember, that's a podcast we're on. Casts. 
Castzilla is for the website, but the show is called Castzilla. And remember, you guys, not all of you watch on Fridays or download on Fridays, and we need to get those numbers up, all right? Okay. And then they go into like an empty bar and they're yeah, talking well, about. Buy me a drink. Come on. She, buy me a drink. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Come Before on. that, he like destroys a train that they were on. So she survived like two incidences. By the way, I thought it was really mean where he finds the other blonde girl, but it's not her. Oh, so he just yeah. tosses her. <laughs> Yeet. <laughs> uh, so she survives two things, and her first thing is like, oh, wow, I really could go for a I mean, I probably could too, but I want to get away first. I think I'd want to leave that area completely. Like, yeah. take, like, okay, we're in New York. Take me to, like, Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Jeff Bridges gets a revelation, which I'll get to in a second. He goes to call the military and let them know. And then uh, Jessica Lang, she's hanging out in the bar. And then Kong's hand he comes. He just in. somehow finds her. Some, I guess he smelled her and found her. But like the hand comes in, and he's on the other side of the window, and I don't think it actually works technically. Yeah. And he's doing the pervy like. Yee. <laughs> and then she doesn't even run away. She's like, ah, uh, she like falls into the hand. I'm like, you, no, you could have gotten away from that easily. Look, look, she had to pretend for Jeff Bridges. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, I totally don't want this, but I definitely do. Yeah. <laughs> so then uh, Kong takes her, and then Jeff Bridges knows where he's going uh, because there's this uh, there's this thing in New York that looks like the mountains from his uh, his native island. And I just want to say the end. Everyone knows the ending of the original Kong. Uh, the ending of this movie was unforgettable. I'll never forget the end of this movie when it takes place at the World Trade Center because they were newer at the time and they wanted to one up the Empire State. But why are you giving me that look? Did you not think this movie was unforgettable? That it was a very unforgettable ending? Did you forget the end of the movie? I know what you're doing. <laughs> the uh, Twin Towers resemble the mountains on his island, which he did not climb, but for some reason he decides he wants to climb the World Trade Center. Whatever. Because he has to climb yeah. a building. Uh, this Kong, out of all the Kongs I've seen, uh, the seven, the the Kong Skull Island Kong. We haven't really seen him climb a lot of things, so mm -hmm. I can't say anything yet because he's kind of too big to climb anything. This Kong is the worst looking climbing Kong I've ever seen. It he's looks kind of so like terrible. He's like, because the suit's not very mobile and it's like poorly blue screened. Uh, so he climbs up the building and Jeff Bridges breaks into the World Trade Center. And the World Trade Center stuff looks great because they filmed. Some of it was on location, and then they built, like, the lower parts on a set, and okay. they had miniatures, and I think it all blends together pretty well. So, yeah, he, Jeff Bridges made, like, an agreement with the military. He's like, don't kill him, just capture him, and then I'll tell you where he is. So, you think they're going to honor that, because Kong, before he climbs, he's staring at the military, and they all have their guns at him, and then none of them shoot? And it's like, wow, I feel like you could solve this problem pretty easily right now, but I guess they're afraid of hurting the girl, which, I mean, an ape that can kill most of the people in the city and one chick, I, I know what I'm doing. I'm pulling the trigger. Uh, so you think the military's gonna honor that. But then Kong gets to the top, and then it turns out the military was not gonna honor that, and they want to kill him. And it's like, well, why didn't they just shoot him when they had the chance? It's weird. You know what? what? You know what else is weird? I understand Jeff Bridges wants Kong to live, but then, like, the the military come out, the army guys, and they have the flamethrower. Yeah. Yeah, and then Kong does that awesome jump to the other building <laughs> where he looks like he's flying. I like uh, when he takes uh, whatever the heck he picked up that he threw at the dude with the flamethrower yeah. and it explodes. Yes. And Jeff Richards is just like, yeah! Yeah, kill him all! And I'm like, he's like, he's Whoa! celebrating the death of, like, army guys. And I'm like, that's really mean he goes yeah you dirty sons of bastards i'm, yeah, like, so I'm like yeah I'm like what the fuck jeff bridges <laughs> like holy shit i'm like those guys just died trying to defend violently the yeah but Vi very violently <laughs> uh so i thought that was pretty brutal and then the helicopters show up because instead yeah. of planes they do yeah. helicopters and they have the mini guns on the outside and uh this is the most violent kong death ever there was so much blood. And you know what? This has been a pretty bloodless movie, except for the snake, but that mm -hmm. was very brief. So I remember being as a kid, because you know, the original Kong, even if he is bleeding, it's black yeah. and white, it's still sad. But I remember being as a kid watching this for the first time, being like, oh my God, because blood is just squirting out of him. It's just, he's just drenched. And he, he's just drenched. He literally him. turns red. 
And it's like, holy shit, this is brutal. And the reason it's like that is because uh, Dino De Laurentiis, he wanted, he wanted a tragic ending. And there's actually a pretty famous quote from him. No one cried when Jaws died. But when the monkey dies, people are gonna cry. Intellectuals are gonna love a Kong. Even film buffs who love the first Kong are gonna love ours. Why? Because I don't give a crap. I don't, I don't understand the last part of that. But basically, he wanted a really sad ending. And the only way you can think of that is to have just mountains of blood come out of Kong. He gets shot multiple times. Yes. Blood everywhere. And then he falls off the building. Stop. In hands. <laughs> and somehow doesn't just splatter yeah. and like... <laughs> Instead, you just get to hear the thump, thump. Thump, thump. Yes, which... The American Godzilla stole the Matthew Broderick American Godzilla because when they oh, yeah. when they kill Godzilla in that oh, yeah. they, they do the American they, they do the heart and then the eye oh, yeah oh, yeah yeah. Um, yeah so then Kong just dies horribly everyone's sad and then the credits just play over his corpse while everyone's just taking yeah, was, pictures then, of it uh, what was it Jeff Bridges and uh, Jessica Lange are like trying to like get to each other but everybody's crowding around yeah. her like are you okay and she's like clearly I'm okay <laughs> <laughs> get away from me <laughs> uh, so yeah what did, what did you think of this King Kong I, I really feel like if this was not rated what it was rated what was it rated I think it was PG-13. This is before PG-13 yeah. rating. So well, it might have been PG. Okay. And since it was an ape, they didn't care. It, it felt like a porn to me. <laughs> Majority of the time. Because like, oh if my you, God. If you, so Italian producers, as I'm learning from the show. And yeah, thanks, ta thanks, Tony. Yeah. Uh, Italian producers. Not Dino. Dino was pretty well respected. He made some shit, but he made some good stuff too. I'm, found, I'm finding out that there's some movies that were made as porns, but then they cut the porn out and released them in different territories as just normal movies. This feels like that. If this was like a schlocky, like something, not even Kong, just a King Kong ripoff, I feel some like- type of like monster I thing. feel like there would have been sex everywhere. And then when it came to America, an American distributor would have been like, let's cut out all the sex. This is what it feels like. <laughs> it is- a very sexual movie. It's more sexual than a King Kong movie has any right to be. But I kind of love it. I I did love it too. I was just I, very uncomfortable watching yeah, a lot of it. I loved it as a kid because it's it's King Kong and it's in color and the effects were pretty decent. I thought just like really like big monster movies. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. Do you have a show where you talk about the the Stop monster? Stop plugging <laughs> it. <laughs> you said it two times already. <sighs> Uh, Speaking and, of uh, that, where's our shirts? Oh yeah, I gotta make shirts for that. They might be, no, they're not gonna be done by the time this happens. Terrible. Um, yeah, so I used to really, really love it. And then the Peter Jackson one came out and I went to rewatch this one. I'm like, oh wow, this one sucks. This one's actually a big piece of shit. I'm like, what the hell? There were no dinosaurs. It's trying to, it's really, really bad. Now I've watched it again uh, in HD for the first time. Thanks to you. You're welcome. Yes, I, uh, I changed your name, by the way, on my HBO account. I didn't have it. I did notice that you had a couple people on your account. One was Don Trump. I do you, I didn't know you knew. I Why know. are you the way that you are? Why? Why did you change your name? You, <laughs> you should see what it is now. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, um, I watched it in HD on my big screen TV. And like, I guess I guess for years I was just watching this on tape or like four by three on T on small TVs watching the big screen. I'm like, oh, wow, this movie actually looks pretty damn good. Yeah, it actually holds up. It holds up. I mean, any effects that are dated would have looked good at the time. Uh, again, this is right before Star Wars and Superman and the 80s. Uh, and it probably would have looked better if it came out in the 80s. But as we fought, we will find out in the future, that's not the case. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think it's a really good time. Uh, it's definitely not the best King Kong movie. It's definitely not the worst. Watch King it Kong. for Jessica and Jeff. Jessica Lange yeah. is so fucking hot. In this such a movie. babe. She's such a babe. Um, yeah, Again, I'm, still, her and Jessica, <laughs> what up? Hi, if you're uh, watching oh, this. That's, I, meant, I wanted to mention earlier. So I thought it was interesting that first Kong 30s, this Kong 70s, we're ignoring Toho Kong. The remake of Kong was in the 30s. And then uh, Kong Skull Island was in the 70s. So I thought... 
it would be really cool if the Brie Larson character from Kong Skull Island is in Kong vs. Godzilla and it's played by Jessica Lange because the age would kind of work. But then I remembered, no one gives a shit about Brie Larson's character or any of the characters in Kong Skull Island. And that's a movie I like, but the characters are very forgettable. So yeah, that idea doesn't matter. I kind of like forgot the ex- I know uh, Tom Hiddleston's uh, in it. In the new one? It's Brie Larson and Tom Hiddleston. Oh, yeah, in Kong Skull Island. Yeah, yeah we saw that together. Um, oh, you were there? <laughs> yeah. Well, because in Godzilla King of the Monsters, uh, Miles Dyson from Terminator 2, he's the older version of one of the guys in Kong Skull Island. So I was like, that'd be cool if they bring Jessica Lange to be the older Brie Larson character. But then Jessica Lange would have to act poorly to match Brie Larson. I like Brie Larson. I don't know what happened. After Kong Skull, after she won her Oscar, she just started sucking in movies. I don't understand what happened. I look at her in Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. And then I look at her in... Mm. Captain Marvel, sorry. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't <laughs> even remember the name. <laughs> I was like, wait, that's superhero thing. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. She just, she's Like, been- is it the script? Because I know, like, with Kristen Stewart, like, Kristen Stewart's good in good movies. But then, like, things like Twilight and other things, I'm kind yeah. of like, Ugh. Like, so is know. it just maybe I'm not given? watching. Maybe I'm not watching the smaller indie movie she's in. Maybe yeah. she's better in those. Why the hell are we talking about Brie Larson? <laughs> anyway, uh, everyone just turned the channel off as soon as I said <laughs> Brie Larson. Uh, but then you you forgot Captain Marvel's name, so they probably turned it back on. Yeah, they were like, like, oh, oh, yeah, that wait, woman forgot. Wait, there's oh, a woman oh. not defending Brie Larson? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I would say definitely check this one out. If you have HBO Max, I'll give you a Johanna's HBO Max account. You can no. make a funny name on it. No. Uh, definitely check Changing it out. My and then um, what I like about this movie is that it has a very definitive ending. Kong gets shot. He falls. He plummets to his death. Totally dead. His heart stops. He's done. So, of course, Dunzo. of course, 10 years later, they got the same director back to do King Kong Lives, which we'll do another time. Spoiler. It's not very good, and it's very hard to find. Also, spoiler, <laughs> he lives. <laughs> he lives. King Kong lives, and he's not alone. Johanna, there's a lady Kong. I know. No, ask, I... Me, ask me if she has tits. Does she have tits? She has big Kong tits. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. And, uh... Jesus Christ, why did you make me drink whiskey before? I didn't even have that much.